we welcome everybody here tonight officially to our gathering. This is an, you've come to an, a very historic occasion because this is an occasion where um, we've got our dear friends in Germany, uh, Molly and Hillary from Australia, and our dear sister uh, from uh, Adelaide who runs the, the House of Prayer, Cherie. And we've also got Fred and Sue Arrow, who are leaders of the Global Watch, who are organising a, a convocation of prayer in Hernhut in Germany. So we're going to have a communion service. We're going to celebrate the wine and the and the blood of Jesus and the broken body of Jesus a bit later on. And we're going to ask Sue to share for five minutes and also hear from our, our two sisters in Germany. We'd better hear from Cherie as well. She'd never forgive us if we don't, she doesn't say something. Um, but we've also got, uh, Kim, we've got some dear friends from Jerusalem. Is that right? Do you want to introduce our friends from Jerusalem? You're muted, Kim. Cynthia. Uh, Diana Hewitt. Uh, Cynthia was on her phone. I think she's asked for it to be recorded and she'll watch later. But Diana Hewitt, would you like to say hello briefly? I think it's Cynthia. Or is it Cynthia? One of the two. Have I lost them? One was at home, one was walking. So they were in Jerusalem, and I can't see them at the moment. Can't see them? They're not there. No. If they come back, uh, we just want to honour I'll let you know. Yeah, let us know. And uh, but well, They're regulars on Global Watch as well, yeah. Fred, would you like to lead us in prayer and start us off uh, from Germany and uh, Fred Rowe, and then, yes. uh, then we'll go to, um, is Misha with us tonight from Lennox Head? Misha, um, no, we she's not okay. Um, we'll go to um, we'll go to Lynn in Tinaru. We'll just pretend Lynn's got relatives in Czechoslovakia. <laughs> over over to you, Fred. Lead us off as we start this historic uh, global uh, celebration of Jesus and the love of Jesus for our dear Moravian brothers and sisters and their inspiration to us, and we're going to celebrate the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So over to you, Fred, lead us off. Well, Father, we are so thankful for this gathering. We're so thankful for everybody that's here. And, Lord, it's by divine appointment that we are all together. And, first of all, we send greetings and blessings to Australia from Herrenhut, Germany. And uh, we say that the seeds that were planted here 300 years ago are sprouting up again in amazing ways. And they're not confined to Heronhood anymore. They're spreading all over the world. And we just declare that Austria, Australia, excuse me, is a country that is on fire for the Lord. And those, that fire is spreading, it's spreading like a wildfire and nobody can control it because Lord, it's from you. And so we just say, Lord, we're asking for a continual spirit of wisdom and revelation over my brothers and sisters in Australia, that they would know how to steward what it is that, that you're doing, uh, Holy Spirit, and that, um, that we just say that Australia is going to be transformed as a nation. And so we just de declare over each one of you and over your nation that the best days are ahead of you and not behind you. We declare those things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, Fred, in Hernhut in Germany. Lynn in Tineru in northern Queensland. Amen, amen. Thank you, Fred. Oh, Father, we just thank you for this outpouring that, yes, began 300 years ago and has emanated around the world via the various missionaries from uh, Hernhut. And now we are... Um, again, that connection is happening, Lord, and we just thank you for the outpouring on the Australian girls that are there that they will bring back to us in Australia um, a, a spark, a seed that will just grow and grow, Lord, through the um, prayer movement here in Australia, Lord, and, and we've seen those connections between us at Canberra Declaration, Celebrate Israel, 
Global Watch Lord, there are connections already and we're just seeing those connections growing. We just thank you so much, Lord, for what you are doing, what you have done and what you're going to do in and through um, each one of us. And Father, I want to bless Fred and Sue Rao and thank you so much for them, Lord. Um, I can say, Ich liebe dich. I learned it from a <laughs> German friend of mine, which means I love you. <laughs> and um, just... Uh, talking to wife before and I said, oh, we'll be seeing Hilary and Molly and Cherie and I said, with bells, with knobs on, he said, they'll be there with bells on and I said, you don't know what you're saying. <laughs> so the, the bells, bless the Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. We might get Cherie Lynn to lead us in a prayer from Germany <clears throat> and then we'll go to... Um, Elise in Western Australia in Perth. Hello, we just uh, invite you just to come as we gather together and we just say, Lord, have your way. Yes. Have your way in, yes. in us. Have your way as we connect with mm -hmm. each other. But, Lord, we just want to welcome your presence and, mm -hmm. yeah, we trust you to lead us and to guide us and to to open our hearts and our ears to what you're saying at this time. Amen. Jesus. Holy Father, as we come in unity as your children, um, that unity, Father, with one heart, one mind, that commands a blessing from you. And I'm so stunned, Lord, at the network that you are building across the globe. I can see it in the spirit and it's layer upon layer upon layer upon layer of people praying and worshipping. So we enter your courts with thanksgiving and your courts with praise. And um, we say lift up those ancient doors and let the king of glory come into this meeting right across the world, wherever they're meeting, even with what Jason is sharing in Fiji. Let your glory come, Lord. Let your kingdom be seen in all the earth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And then we're going to go to Hillary for a short prayer. Another miracle. But Lord Jesus, we want to give you the glory. We want to say thank you. You know, Warwick, I was trying to behave myself here. And I, I can't believe Holy... it, Hillary. I can't believe it. Yeah. Oh, the Holy <laughs> Spirit. You know, it didn't work. <laughs> thank you, Fred, for telling us the truth. We need the okay. truth. Um, the Holy Spirit drew me to the window. And Lord, I just want to praise and thank you for your glory. On Saturday night, he came down with fire. It was, first of all, an oil lamp. I put it on our telegram thing. It was then turned into a covenant ring. It then turned into a crown. And then it turned into this glory cloud over this house. And, Lord, we don't take this lightly. We say we want to see you exalted in all things. We want to see what's in your heart, your passion, released. And I'm just feeling the travail as in Romans 8, the groaning beyond words for the coming forth of the true sons and daughters of God, for the true ecclesia to arise and this birth to be released, even as we're praying into nations, and that, Lord, this birth will come forth alive, will come forth and release the revival and reformation that's in your heart, and that, Lord, it will not be aborted in this days. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. We love you, Hillary. I'm going to ask my brother Con, who is sort of in a in a funny way, sort of related to you guys as well here in in Hernhut. Over to you, Con. Have to unmute first, though, Con. Unmute. Okay. How right. how am I related? Well, I'm you, just, you know, I'm just taking a wild guess. Come on, keep going. <laughs> Uh, you know, it says, uh, yes. therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus. That's Hebrews 10, 19. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, that it's all through the blood. Thank you, Father, that we come into your presence, Lord, that we have your, we have fellowship with you, Father God, through the blood, Lord, that we, and we, and we plead the blood, Lord. Uh, of Jesus for for Australia, Lord. We plead the blood of Australia. As bro our brother said that those words really, really touched me. Lord, we um, 
We thank you for the fire, fire that's coming to Australia. We know it's all through the blood of Jesus. Father, we, we pray, Lord, that you would cleanse this nation through the blood of Jesus, Lord, that there'll be such a revelation of the blood of Jesus and and the and that we can come to, to know our Father through through the precious blood of, of our of our Messiah Jesus. We praise you, Father, and, and give glory to your holy name in your presence, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Molly, would you like to lead us in a prayer from, from Germany? Herr Father God, we just thank you for the power of the blood of Jesus. We thank you that we that the blood of Jesus is our righteousness. And we thank you that it is speaking a good word for all your people, all over the nations. And once more, Father, you are turning our hearts and our eyes to behold the Lamb of God right. who takes away the sins of the world. Yes, so we thank you for this time where we look upon the one who was pierced for us the one who died, the one who finished the work on the cross, the one who is seated on the throne in the heavens, the Lamb of God who is worthy to receive honor and glory and power and blessing from all tribes and tongues and nations. And Lord, we thank you that you're bringing us as one in you. And so, Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for Global Watch. We thank you for Canberra Declaration that you raised up. Father God, we thank you for the many networks of, Lord, the communion table to which you bring us, the koinonia of your fellowship, the invitation to your table. Father God, that started so, Lord, even with Abraham as a covenant. Lord, even as with the Moravians, Father God, that they would want, that they gave us a motto, a motto to, to give, to see and to behold the Lamb of God and to say, may the Lamb of God receive every reward for his suffering. And so now, so now Lord, with the partaking of your body and your blood, we are strengthened as the body of Christ, as one, as the ecclesia. We are rising as a mighty army across the earth with the power and authority seated in heavenly places to take back what with Jesus has given us so that heaven will be on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Father, we thank you for it in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, uh, our dear sister Molly in Hernhut in Germany. And um, we'll, we'll definitely get a prayer from Kim and Nell before the time finishes. And apparently Nell can actually pray in German. And right at the present yeah. moment, that's an advantage because, um, you know, it's just powerful to hear those beautiful words in German. Um I think it'd be great to hear from the songbird and the Ivan who tinkles the white ivories and the black ivories as well. Bless the Lead Lord. Lead us into worship, my sister, my Bless brother. The Lord. You know, when we were uh, we were praying uh, for the book of the Moravian Miracle, Pastor Warwick uh, posed the question to us all, what is our personal revelation of the Lamb? Well, this song is born from that. When we behold him, nothing else matters at all. And I believe that's where the Hearn Hut miracle was so grounded. When they confronted, when they were confronted with the lamb in all his splendor, nothing else would ever matter to them as much as him. Oh, oh, oh. 
things that matter at all We'll behold the land face to face So tell me where else could I go, Lord? You hold the truth of life itself Bible I really, really adore. It's a psalm of David. And you know, we know the Moravians lived the Great Commission. And so here we are today in Australia, New Zealand, the Pacific, Jerusalem. As Kim would say, as far from Jerusalem as the ends of the earth can be. And yet here we are, and we sit here and we cry unto the Lord. Hear our cry, our Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Oh, Lord. 
Thank you so much, uh, Leonie and Ivan. We're going to hear from them in a second. So we are starting our sort of celebration communion service, and we're working with um, Fred and Sue Rowe and the Jesus House in Hernhut, who are gathered uh, uh, a major convocation of up to a couple hundred people who are worshipping Jesus and praying, I think for seven days, if I've if got it right. Is that right, uh, Sue and Fred? Yes. yes. The, the wonderful magic number. It's, it's God's number, I believe, seven. And uh, Kim uh, and Nell, you want to say anything about what's happening in Hernhut? Because I think you've both got German heritage too. Well, technically, our Austrian background, Nell's got the German background. Uh, I actually want to make a comment about Luther. Someone's brought it up in the chat. But the Lutheran Church of Australia, and I believe this is a significant blessing, and I put the details in the chat, repented back in the 90s, 96, I think it was, for the way Lutherans had treated Jews. And I think that is a redemptive thing from this nation, uh, and that's worth noting. So uh, there's been uh, issues over that, and I won't go into the detail of that, but that was a blessing. Nell, would you like to maybe pray? Can you let, can you pray in German now, just so we can actually be really authentic Moravians tonight? Yeah. Yes, if you like. Yes, if you like. I've got a little prayer here that I found online, and then I'll put it in the chat. It's sort of like a good night prayer. So, uh, and I just want to say that we're here in Australia, and you're there in Germany, but we're all family, and we carry you in our hearts together as one. So this is the evening prayer. Müde bin ich, gehe zu Ruhe, schließe meine Augen zu. Vater, lass die Augen dein, über meinem Bette sein. Hab ich Unrecht heut getan, sieh es, lieber Gott, nicht an. Deine Gnade und Christi Blut ja allen Schaden gut, alle dir mir sind verwandt, Gott lasst ruhen in deiner Hand, alle Menschen groß und klein sollen dir befohlen sein, kranken Herzen sind ruh, müde Augen schließen zu, Gott im Himmel halte wacht, gib uns eine gute Nacht. Amen. And I'll put it in the chat. Blessings, everyone. That's beautiful, Nell. <clears throat> and there's a there's a good bit of connection happening between um, Australia here and um, Germany and the, the Moravian story. So what happened was earlier this year, I did an interview, Sue and Fred, with um, Jason, because myself and Kurt, who's on the call. Are you there, Kurt? Kurt Mulberry? Um, yes. Yep. So do you want to? So we, what happened? I'll let you finish it, uh, Kurt. So I did this interview with Jason because Kurt and I are writing this book together on the story of um, the Great Southland Revival, which is like Trace and Revival back through from Australia, through Europe, back into um, you know Mora the Moravians who had quite an influence in Australia. When you actually start to unpack history, it's a bit hidden, but it's the truth. And then Wesley, of course. And you go right back into the early church. And uh, um, so, you know, we put this book together, didn't we? You wanted to finish the story, Kurt, on that? Yeah, well, the idea for a book on the history of revival tracing from Acts to Australia, as Warwick has explained, that was with us from the start of the year. And one of the early conversations Warwick had, we, we planned to interview a whole lot of um, people who've researched, written, you know, authored, lectured on, on these sorts of topics. And Warwick spoke to Jason Hubbard and realized that in the process of writing this book, what about we do a, a side project on just the history of the Moravians because Jason is so passionate about that. So, and it actually happened to be uh, the 300th anniversary of the founding of Hernhut. And so we, it, it was just a real God moment and we decided, all right, let's do it. Let's, let's write a book. So Jason um, worked furiously on a manuscript for a couple of months and then we polished that and um, designed the cover and did all the sort of editing and um, found lots of endorsements and published it. So this book was released around about a month, probably a month and a half ago now. 
and something we're very excited to be uh, involved in, very proud of, and that's where that project came from. So I've actually just finished writing a chapter of our um, book that's going to be released, released later in the year, specifically on the Moravian revival. So, um, yeah, just basically condensing, in a way, condensing Jason's book into just a chapter for our own book uh, because we're trying to just give a snapshot of all these really big events and um, sort of an, just a really quick overview in our book. So that's where this, this uh, book came from. Yes, yeah, so it's quite fascinating. Here we are now celebrating this uh, historic <clears throat> uh, global communion uh, time. And I've also got my assistant, Cody Mitchell. You want to say good day, Cody? Cody works with myself and uh, Kurt here on the camera declaration. And he's a writer and a thinker and uh, also does a lot of great videos. You can see a lot of his videos on the Camera Declaration YouTube video site. You might be able to put that in the chat, Hugh uh, or Kim. But um, Cody, you want to say good day to everybody? Hey, everyone. It's uh, yeah, really, really great to be with everyone. Yeah, we've got to say a bit more than that. You're a man of few words, I know, <laughs> but come on, just say something more than that. Oh no, it's a, it's super encouraging to um to see people gathering from all over the world to um you know we're united by Christ and and seeing Him glorified and it's uh yeah super encouraging. Yeah, it is. That's great. Well, look, thanks so much, Cody. Cody was going to share tonight, but he will share another time. And he's got bumped by the Honourable Reverend Doctor, uh, Her Royal Highness Sue Rowe. Over to you, Sue. And Fred. Dear God, who's that? <laughs> I, I love the sense of humor. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> We're a bit anarchistic across here. You might have noticed that, Fred, but anyway. Yeah, yeah. I was, you don't know, but I was praying in tongues in the background, just, you know, <laughs> casting out a few things. <laughs> <laughs> God knows we all need it. <laughs> Go ahead, Sue. I think he's calling on you. Oh. And your Royal Highness. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for uh, this opportunity to speak uh, in front of you, Australians. We love you. Yes. And there's nothing you can do about it. And um, thank you for just wanting to hear a little bit about what's happening here in Hernhut. Um, <laughs> we are here by the grace of God. Um, it is the 300 year anniversary of the first house uh, built here in Hernhut. And Isaiah 62, 6 and 7 was spoken over that house. So um, that is obviously a very significant verse in terms of the birth of the watchman. And um, so we uh, have not been, we've been on a 10-year trajectory that was birthed back in 2017 on the 290 290-year anniversary of the outpouring. And um but have not met for two years because of COVID. COVID knocked a whole, um, a whole uh, us all out of the ballpark and kind of shifted things. And I believe from Dean's message last night that it was we're in a shift into a new era. And if you look in the Bible, whenever there is a key governmental shift, guess who shows up? It's the watchman. And if you have problems with that, just look at uh, 1 Samuel, I think, 18, and then 2 Kings um, 11. Um, that, in particular, is a, 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 a scripture that's really um, deep in my heart. The Global Watch was birthed through an open vision um, that I had in October of 2000. And it was basically a 9-11 uh, the collapse of two towers, but out of the clear blue sky, a giant pair of hands came down, picked it up, and when it opened up, it was Big Ben. And I, I had no idea what was happening to me, but there was definitely a big, um, big shift in the warfare that I was under and what I, what I was contending for. And so, been journey. It, it, God spoke to me about a global watch shortly after that, and that's when I landed on Second Kings eleven. And that story is the story of the watchman being set up in Israel to save the last seed of David, Joash, um, for the, the coming of the Lord Jesus. And I believe we are now in uh, a time of preparation of the, of the earth. The birth pangs are all around us. It doesn't take long to see it. 
and God is raising up watchmen now to um, connect and build uh, particularly the spiritual walls around Israel and Jerusalem for the return of the king. Mm -hmm. And um, the end time narrative is unfolding before our eyes. I think COVID was a part of it, God's plan to uh, begin that, really bring that process more into accentuation because uh, if that hadn't happened, we'd still be, you know, struggling to you know, get the vision out there and promote it. And what what has actually done is exploded the global watch, and um, now probably 120 nations are in, involved. And I don't know how many nations have their national expression right now, but Canada was the is the latest one to get off uh, on the runway and run with this, and they are really buzzing. Um, so anyway, it's not, uh, Fred and Susan doing this. This is God's call to us. And I believe the prayer movement is moving more comfortably into the call of the watchman. Uh, I think there's a key difference between intercessor and watchman. One is that watchman is vital to have community. And that's what we've been exercising. Count von Zinzendorf here in Herrenhut is the one who quoted, there's no Christianity without community. But I've, we've found it largely lacking in today's church, a corporate prayer. And I, I can prove it. <laughs> the, I, um, I wrote a book um, just within the last year or so, Unleashed. Upside down. Is it upside down? No, put, you put it upside down so they can read it. Oh, yeah. that's yeah. interesting. Yeah, oh, that's, that's down, Is that right? Yeah. That's no. still upside down. Put it the other way, Sue. That's it. It's that Unleashed. Way. Yeah. It's we are down under, under, but we need it the right way around. <laughs> yeah, I'll well, tell you I, what. The... Since you since you're down under, we figured you'd un you'd understand. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you'd really like the the touch. You'd really like the title of this. It's called Unleashed. We <laughs> unleash you <laughs> from down under. They're, they're already the un the the down unders are already pretty unleashed right now. I don't know. <laughs> it, it's called unlocking the power of corporate prayer, and it's really a biblical call back to. Uh, the power of corporate prayer. If you look at the uh, book of Acts and the book, all of the Bible, when prayer is mentioned, about 99% of the time, it's all <clears throat> corporate prayer. But if you look at today's literature, it's all in silent and solo prayer. And in fact, Barna did a study in 2017 on um, on this, the state of prayer in an American church, and he found less than 2% of people engage with corporate prayer. So we are being called to re-engage the church with corporate prayer. And this, this book is, will give you an, a, a, a scriptural backbone of that. And most recently, I wrote a book called Remnant Rising. And I, I don't, don't have time to even get into it. But um, this is about a watchman call to prepare the way. It, is, um, it, it gives the biblical backbone of the watchman call today. And how it's really needed in a community, I'm going to tell you, is going to be absolutely vital. And that, the last chapter goes through Matthew 24 and what the signs and symptoms of what we're seeing today in terms of the anti-narrative unfolding. And so if you have any questions about why we're being called to do this, I believe it's a restora restoration of our our national heritages and our individual call into our families, our churches and communities to raise up the spirit of Elijah, which will come to restore all things. And so that's basically what I want to say, but we are on a trajectory towards the 300 year anniversary of the outpouring. We'll be here next year. There's been a grace for us to come. Um, and it, has turned out in the meantime that we found out that Ra the Rao family was very much involved with Count von Zinzendorf. So that's can you, it. Can you share that story, Doctor? That would be you, that'll be one. Please tell me. Yeah, but we're 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 now over five minutes. Uh, we're way over five well, minutes. Have, you, you've got grace, mate. You've got grace on you. So you want to share with us a little bit? <laughs> Special grace from Australia. Yeah, that's the one. Okay, so so I think what you need to know is. Uh, is that God is moving in an unusual way here. And we are trying to really catch up with him. He's speaking to us and we're trying to listen to say what it is that, that is shifting. Um, 
Dean Briggs was Dean, Dean Briggs was uh, was speaking last night about uh, that that there's not only just a, a sort of a shift of seasons, but he believes that there's a shift in in the era of the church, and uh, and we need to be awakened to that, and we need to understand what that is and and what he's doing. And as Watchmen, one of the one of the key things that we're called to be is is forerunners and you know watchmen are supposed to be on the wall they're looking out to see what's beyond the the walls of the city and that's an that's an important function for the watch and uh and so we're and not only to do that individually but to do that corporately and that is uh is challenging in many ways but god's calling us to do that because he wants us to know what it is that he's bringing about and uh, we all know that our our world has been shaken and the, the whole world has been shaken in the last couple of years and uh, become more difficult in many ways. But with that, the spirit of God is rising up and there are many, many people who are, who have come into the kingdom already, but many, many more who are about to come into the kingdom. And we need to know how to, as believers, we need to know how to steward that and how to disciple uh, people. And the old uh, systems or the methodologies that we have, are in many ways inadequate to um, to to do that, to be able to steward that. And so we're really, we don't know what the new ones are, but we're really listening to the Lord to, to for him to tell us, you know, what is going on for us to be sensitive to how he may be shifting the church. Amen. That's great. And look, thank you so much, uh, Fred and Sue. I think we met, my wife was on the call tonight, Alison Marsh, we met in the car uh, from the airport in Colorado Springs and uh, ended up having uh, dinner together, and it was great. And uh, thank God for your leadership, uh, Fred and Sue, in the body of Christ and the and the prayer movement across the globe, and we honour you tonight. We are going to have communion, aren't we, Kim? Kim? <clears throat> yep, I'm just, uh, yes, we are. That's, yes, amazing. It's going to be great. And, Kim, would you, why should we celebrate communion tonight? Tell us why we should celebrate communion tonight, particularly because we're connecting with, with our dear brothers and sisters in, in uh, Hernhut who are celebrating, if you like, or uh, working uh, and trying to, um, should we say, raise up, redig the well of Moravians, of worship and prayer and love to Jesus. So something that was already mentioned by Sue tonight is the need for community or family. And anyone that's listened to me for more than five seconds will know that's so strong with us. Uh, that family is the family of God is so important that we connect, not just look at the back of someone's head on a Sunday morning service, but we connect meaning, meaningfully during our life, our journey together. It is so important that we become family more than anything else. In fact, in fact, the central purpose of the ecclesia is actually fellowship. Um, I won't go into that, but uh, Derek Prince wrote on that very strongly. Um, and communion, which was a celebration of Passover, is a family get-together. In Jewish culture, it is family coming together. And what we're remembering and celebrating and, and really partaking in is the absolute glory that God manifests through Jesus, through overcoming death itself, the idea that Jesus, the creator, the Godhead, created everything, knelt and washed our feet. And that was at, at the beginning of the Last Supper, the, the communion service or Passover service. But he was serving the family. And that service, ultimately the, the incredible torture he went through, 100% completely innocent and that brought our redemption that we would be sons and daughters of the living God and that we would be in the family of God we would be the bride of Christ it's all family and in prayer the watchmen the intercessors the prophets all of us together are a family and I use the word Nell and I obviously use the word mishpaha a lot uh, meaning it's a Hebrew word for family, but you're a family and it's made possible that we are born of the same father. We are born again and we can only be born again because of the work of the cross. So 
that's my encouragement to you tonight and um before we celebrate communion which we're just about to do so if you want to get your bread and juice or wine ready um cody and and uh and dear brother kurt is anything you'd like to add to that about the importance of communion and especially in the light of this moravian connection the fact that we are connecting with Hernhut, which is the home of the moravians and um where councillor zadorf gave his land to these dear people who came from all over all over Europe, seeking refuge and a safe place. And, and uh, Count Sissendorf gave his land to these dear ones, modern, you know, refugees, uh, and he allowed them to grow. And that community broke through with God in 1727 and literally changed the world with a 100-year prayer meeting. This is what this book's about. It says the Moravian miracle, the 100-year prayer meeting that changed the world. Anything you want to add, Kurt and Cody? Yeah, I, actually, as you were sharing about, um, you know, communion specifically in the Moravians, it was during a communion service that the Holy Spirit fell and that their revival basically began. So that was on the 13th of August in 1727. And, um, yeah, one of the amazing things about communion is is that it is the communion of the saints. When we take communion, when we have the, the bread and the um, wine symbolising Christ's body and blood, we're having we're enjoying fellowship with all of the saints from all of the ages. And uh, that includes with the Moravian believers who um, came under that revival in the 1720s. Um, but one of the things that struck me as I've been researching and writing this book, um, Great Southland Revival, is that almost every revival in history is connected in some way. God keeps bring, weaving the threads together from a previous revival into the next one. And if a revival breaks out in our own day, it will almost definitely have been influenced ultimately by the the moravians and by luther and by all these other figures from church history that we've been talking about so when we take communion we're communing with the saints and in fact there's a a short testimony that was written about the moravians communion service and uh the person said we saw the hand of god and his wonders and we were all under the cloud of our fathers baptized with their spirit so they too were aware that in that moment of of revival and renewal that the holy spirit worked that they were communing with their fathers, as in with their um, ancestors, their spiritual ancestors. So there's, it's a wonderful thing about communion. The great cloud of witnesses, eh, Kurt? That's the one. Cheering us on. Cody, anything to add to that? I don't think I can, uh, in good conscience, add to that. I think I'll leave it to my, my elders. I absolutely second everything that um, Kim and Kurt have, have said so far. He's a man of few words, but every word means something with our dear brother Cody. Uh, Fred or Sue, do you want to do an arm wrestle to lead us in a prayer? Which one's going to do it? You better you better unmute first because we do want to hear you. <laughs> yeah, my uh, I need to work out a little bit more. My wife just beat me in the arm wrestle. So I thought she might. Do... I thought she might. But these guys are an incredible <laughs> couple. They're a power duo, and they work together to glorify Jesus. And again, we honor you both. But over to you, Sue. Well, Father, I thank you for this holy moment uh, amongst the nations. Father, we bless uh, Australia. I thank you that you have plans that you have um, to prosper them, not to harm them, to give them a hope in the future. Father, we call forth the words that have been spoken over them, uh, your words that have been spoken over them, and they will not return to the earth um, uh, void. So, Father, thank you that you're watching over your word to perform it. And so, Lord, we just call out Australia's destiny and thank you for the blood of Jesus that can cover us all in Jesus' name. You know what? I've got a great idea. Fred, you pray too. Come on. You pray too. <laughs> I've done it before. Um, <laughs> so, Father, we, as we're taking the communion elements here we just we are thank you for your body that was broken for us and uh and that that lord that it is it's all every time we do this it's fresh because it's it's a new reminder of that um that we are so dependent on you and lord we're as more dependent on you than ever in these days going ahead in these days that we're leading up to and so we're thankful for your love and we're thankful for your wisdom and we're thankful for your broken body that was done once and for all and uh so as we just as we take the bread we just we just remember that and give you thanks let's just let's take the bread 
Amen. Let's just take the bread now. In Jesus' name. I'm going to ask my brother Kim to give thanks for the wine. In Jesus' name. Papa God, we come before you humbly. And we thank you for sending your son Jesus. Jesus, that you came. You were crucified. You bled. Your life bud was poured out for us. So we simply take this cup, which is the new covenant, not a repaired one or a rejuvenated one, but a completely new agreement between man and his creator. This new covenant, which is life itself, eternal life, we receive it now with grace and thanks. Blessed be the Lord. Let's drink together, Bashem Yeshua. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We've got our sister Leone and Ivan's going to share a song that's taken literally straight out of Isaiah 53. And uh, some of you might know this song. It's been around for a little while. And, uh, you know, if you do and know it, you can sing along unmuted, of course, because if we all sing together, we'll all get out of tune. Um, so lead us off, Leone and Ivan. That's just fantastic, Leone and Ivan. Thank you so much. And uh, it's just been great to celebrate this global uh, communion service, uh, Fred and Sue. We're we're just so honored to be able to be with you. Thank you for thank you for inviting us. And we just again we just speak blessings over you and over Australia. And we just we are we really do believe that Australia is about to. You're on. There's parts of Australia that are on fire already, but we believe the whole nation is going to just come alive and come on fire, and that the best days of your ministries and of your nation are ahead of it, not behind it. Well, there's an encouragement um, <clears throat> for for us uh, from our dear brother and sister in Germany, and just so you know, in the chat you can find the title of of um, uh, Sue's two books that uh, she's mentioned. They're in the chat, and you can get them on, that on Amazon. Is that right, Sue? Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. I put the Amazon links in the chat as well, Warwick. Just while I'm thinking of this, has just gone onto Amazon, hasn't it, Kurt? Just literally in the last few days. So 
Um, yeah. When I say just on Amazon, it's just on Kindle. So it's been on Amazon for about a month, but we've finally got it on Kindle. I'll and, pop the link in the win in the uh, chat window. Yeah, but certainly if you want to grab Sue's books, they are on Amazon, and the link again is in the chat window. And uh, like if we don't hear from Hillary and and uh, Molly. Again, uh, they're probably going to kill us when they get back here. So, you want to say anything? Is it happy? Is it, you're happy that we're connected between you guys, Molly, and and uh, you know, Hillary? Yeah, I, I would love to, but Molly's got a scripture. Yeah, I just, uh, if you permission, can I please release the um, the scripture that? Yes, you can. That was uh, the revelation of that which uh, that brought about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit when they were having communion, it was from John 13, verse 34. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, mm. even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. So, Father God, I just release this oh. with this holy gathering. And this holy moment, let it spur that same revival of love in our hearts, Sorry. in our nations, because we desperately need your love. We need your love to be poured out. And let this love revival come forth now. We release it from here in Jesus' mighty in name. Jesus Amen. name. Amen. 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 Thank you. And Lord, I would just love to also release what you've been speaking to me since I arrived in Germany about Malachi 4, 1 and 2. And I just thank you, Lord. There are many different watches as part of the global watch, but the healing watch is one that's really, I believe, so close to the heart of the Lord that uh, Sue and Fred have um, graciously released. And as some of us went up to the watchtower here on the Holy Acre yesterday to pray. And um, the brother who's leading the watch, he brought a scripture that was such a confirmation to my heart. And he brought Isaiah 33, verse 6. I don't know whether we, I could get it for me. But basically, it speaks about the stability of our times. We need the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. We need the understanding of the Holy Spirit. But most of all, thank you so much. I'll read it as the word says. Um, he shall be, this is the Lord, um, the stability of our times, a wealth of salvation, wisdom and knowledge. But the fear of the Lord is his treasure. Amen. And, you know, this is the key in Malachi 4.2. And the Lord says in Malachi 4.1, he's coming with a spirit of burning. Mm -hmm. And many times we speak about the Southlands of the Holy Spirit ablaze with the fire baptism of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And it's just been spoken today mm -hmm. in the natural, in the spirit. Mm -hmm. But it then says that for those who fear his name, he shall arise as the son of righteousness with healing, healing. in his wings. And, you know, before we came here, one of the precious Global Watch uh, ladies from Germany, she actually prayed me in to be here. God bless her, Shoshana. And she picked me up from Frankfurt and we went on a three-day prayer assignment and to some very significant places. And we were looking over a place called Marburg. Kurt, I sent you a text. <laughs> I didn't know whether Kurt came from Marburg, but anyway. And uh, it's a very strategic city. And it's a city where a special road was built by Napoleon when he was looting Berlin's, um, gosh, can I get this right, Quad Riga, that horse statue with the Queen of Heaven, victory over battle. And he he stole it and he took it back to Paris. And then there was a return of that same conquering evil spirit back to Berlin. And there was a particular road, a particular gate in that city. And we're believing that this is the same contending that's going on at the moment over Ukraine and Russia and Europe. And I was just really alerted 
and I was taken to this high castle to look down this valley. And I didn't know, but it was the place where the first Presbyterian university founded on the word of God was established. And now it's been perverted to so much humanism. And then round the corner, there was a, an integrous pharmaceutical company that's now taken over by Pfizer. And the whole RMA um, research, all that stuff, and all the vaccines going out globally. And my heart broke before the Lord. I said, Father, what would you have us to declare from this high place? And first of all, I felt the cry of his heart for his young ones, mm -hmm. for the harvest to come forth and to arise and not to be cut off and aborted by this from any premature war. But I also felt him saying to decree this scripture, Malachi 4, 1, that he is coming. He is coming with a spirit of burning. He's coming to break through in this hour. But he said, declare for those who have fear my name, I will arise as the son of righteousness with healing in my wings. And as we went down from that mountain, it was all cloudy. Suddenly the sun broke through and it was as if it was arising. And there were these clouds in the shape of wings. And I just want to prophesy it over Germany, over the nations of the earth, right the way back through to Australia, to Jerusalem. This is our precious Lord. This is what we've had communion. His passion is to heal us. His passion is that we would take hold of the healing he's already given us Amen. and that faith would arise in our hearts and we would allow him to forge in us this reverential fear of the Lord that I believe was a key to what God established in the hearts of the Moravians, yeah. that they were willing Amen. to go out to share the gospel to all these nations. Apparently they took coffins with them. They were willing to lay down their lives for the Lamb and to follow him. And I want yeah. to pray that this would be done in all of our hearts. Yes. Cherie, Molly, Hilly, Hillary, Sue, Fred, every one of us here, but also for our beloved ones in Australia we would come into this reverential fear of God. And in Isaiah 11, 2 and 3, the you know, the sevenfold spirits of God, but he repeats the fear of the Lord. Mm -hmm. This yeah. is the key. Mm -hmm. And I pray Amen. we would have revelation of this in Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen. 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 Well, God bless you. you. We're going to go into groups for five minutes and just share and just a uh, quick discussion. But if you've got to go, Fred and Sue, we understand because we're eating into your lunch hour now. And uh, we honor you. And if you want to stay, you're welcome to at the same time. So God bless you. Thank you, Warwick. God, God bless, bless you. you. God Thank bless you. you. We love you. We love you. We'll we love see you, you later, family. alligator. <laughs> <laughs>